Hello, my students! Welcome to another lesson of the Illinois Early Learning and Developmental Standards. As we can see, I have my uh, little co-host here. This co-host came from the fact that I recorded a Color Kittens video where I had to read a book and uh, do a activity, and I didn't really have anyone, so I... I have, I have this little, little cat now. Ma. Today we will be speaking about the um, Learning Standard 10C, which can be found on, as we can see here, page 56, which is determining, dis determine, describe, and, describe, and apply the probabilities of events. Which, uh, in particular, as you can see here, we will be talking about 10.c.eca, which is describe the likelihood of events with appropriate vocabulary such as possible, impossible, always, or never. And never. Or never. And, as we can see here, the intention for exploring is to attempt to use vocabulary to describe the likelihood, but not always with accuracy. And as seen here, my birthday is always on a Saturday, which I can definitely say that's not very likely, especially with my birthday, it's not likely. My birthday bounces around. It seems to bounce around every year pretty much by one day. So one year I'll have it on Monday, one year I'll have it on Tuesday, but we can all relate to that. We, I don't think there's anybody that has like a birthday that always lands perfectly on a set date. Or set day, for that matter. For develop developing, use vocabulary terms always and never in reasonable ways to describe the likelihood of an event. Example, spring always comes after winter, or we'll never have an elephant as a class pet. Well, now, uh, spring always comes after winter, that's absolutely true. Now, if you're in India, you might have an elephant as a class pet. That's just, <laughs> it, it, just it just depends on the uh, spatial awareness of the situation, of course. And in the case of building, use vocabulary terms possible and impossible to describe the likelihood of events. It's impossible to walk on the ceiling, or it's impossible to sit on a ch chair. Or it's possible to sit on a chair. Yeah. Man, I'm struggling today. Ugh. <laughs> uh. But yeah, well, it's not completely impossible to stand on the ceiling if you have, like, suction cups on your feet. Or use plungers. However, don't try that at home. Because that can create a lot of accidents. And what we'll be using to teach that today will be... Minecraft! A very popular game, a very well-known game, and a game that could honestly qualify for a lot of the preschool benchmarks on the Illinois Early Learning and Developmental Standards, as well as being... I could say a bit more child-friendly, family-friendly than games like I played with the last lesson, like Monster Hunter. That game gets... A little violent, but it still can be fun for most ages. Like, pretty sure the ESRP rating is E10 plus 14, but you know, it can be enjoyed by it can be enjoyed by kids of all type with the right parental uh, supervision. Now, 
I actually have a world load up here, as we can see. Professor's classroom. Go spawn into there. Starting out, we spawn in a snow biome. Also, I have raw rabbit. A rabbit died somewhere around here. But we spawned in a snow biome. Now, as said by um, the Minecraft wiki, the likelihood of spawning a snow biome is actually one third, or 33.33%. Which is basically above a quarter. So, with it being above a quarter of 100% means, you know, it has a very, like, not, not like a 50-50 chance, but it's somewhat likely of happening. Like, there's only two other possibilities that it could happen with, so. And, well, I'm actually, actually, I'm impressed with this spawn, because there's a village over there, and there's a village over there, which, let's look up that. Now, let's see here. Now, as everything in Minecraft is randomly generated, everything has. Well, basically, there's nothing set in stone. Nothing can really be set in stone because there's always a percentage that it could change. Always a likelihood that it could change. Because like I said, there's one third of a chance spawning in... Uh, a snow biome. And as well, it's not that small of a chance to actually get two villages next to each other. I will say pretty nice villages. Definitely nice villages. That is... Let's quicken our pace here. <laughs> Want to keep the audience inside in that right, cat? Ra. Ah, well, looks like this village has a uh, some blacksmiths and uh, a few. See. All right, so fifteen uh, coal for an emerald, and then three emeralds for an axe, and fourteen emeralds for an iron sword with bane of arthropods too. Now I will say the likelihood of uh that happening. Now, all kinds of villager trades are basically random. Now, this 
right here is a similar trade as the other villager, except the Iron Sword actually has Smite on it. And it's also 7 Emerald cheaper. Now, this is more a case where it depends on the class of the villager. Like, for example, a farming villager will obviously always have farming stuff. A weaponsmith will always have weapons. However, the chances of And having stuff like that is very random, honestly. Also, I need to go into a house and sleep. Or I just need to... Oh! Thank you, Iron Golem. You are the, you are the savior of this village. We appreciate you. Man, you didn't even take a scratch. Dub. Need to borrow your bed. Thank you, villager. Nice cape, by the way. <laughs> also, that looks like a comfortable cape. No. All right, let's see. So you're a cleric, which, oh, if I would go hunt and get 32 rotten flesh, you would give me an emerald, and then for emeralds, you give me redstone. Okay. Where? What? What they trade is honestly also dependent on what's most common in the area. So as they're trading iron stuff that means if we would dig down which I could actually do if we would dig down here now don't dig down folks as the number one rule of Minecraft but for Experimentation, we will. Dig down. There's a chance. Ah. Well, we found deep slate and we found copper. Now. Oh. Let's see. Ah, there we are. We had to dig, uh, obviously, a bit far down, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know how to pull up how far we dug down, but iron is here, and let's see how much of a, how much iron is here, actually. Ah! So there's one, two, one, five. Ooh, five. Ooh, six, actually. I'll be. Seven. Eight. Ooh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, there's just eight iron just right here. Now, there are situations, as said by well, no Minecraft players that are, yes, physically impossible. Like, in particular, having a, um, 
basically having 13 diamonds in one area. Or having, like, yeah. Having 13 diamonds or... Basically, the fact that, like, in the case of Minecraft speedrunning, having... Ender pearls in the end uh, fortress chest, as some Minecraft speedrunners will know. Hello, chicken. Good chicken. There you go. Enjoy life. I will check on Circle of Life. Ain't it beautiful? As the chickens will thrive and then cats may kill the chickens, but that's no that's that's what happens. Now Let's see the um, biomes that are around here. Let's see. Oh, there's a cavern there. There's another village. Attach Let's go and see here. Hello. All right, so 26 potatoes for an emerald, and then an emerald for six pieces of bread. Wow. And this is from a farmer. So, yeah, obviously they would have stuff that they grow on their farm. Or need to grow on their farm. <laughs> well, we have some potatoes right here, and... Uh, Red beets, carrots, all that jazz. So this is a farming village. That is, that's nice. Oh. I don't know when that happened. That just happened. And as we can see here, walk across the snow, and we're just in a uh, grassy forest, which uh, obviously. Uh, as most people can tell you, in real life, that is not possible at this close of a range, but in Minecraft, you know, it is possible. That's why also in Mario Brothers, you go from one world, it is... A desert, the next world is the ice world, and the next world just lava. Just lava. And wow! Look at this! Now this is a pretty sight to see! Even without, like, shaders and stuff on, wow. Honestly, a lot of the preschool benchmarks could come from this game alone. And I believe that. Which, honestly, why most of my lessons might be, um, might encompass, uh, Minecraft for the most part. Because weathers and seasons can be taught in Minecraft. 
Um, shapes can be taught in Minecraft. A lot of things can be taught in Minecraft. Which is also obviously why Minecraft Education Edition exists. But this time around, I am just using regular Minecraft because, well, I know it a lot better. And I know how to work it a lot better. But if I ever learn how to work Minecraft Education Edition, I'll probably look into that. Because that, that apparently opens the door to a lot of things. Now, in Minecraft, as most Minecraft players know, there are rare oddities that can happen in a Minecraft world. From the spawning of a woodland village, or woodland mansion, Which, as said um, by the Minecraft wiki, a woodland mansion basically has a chance to spawn of... The only way a woodland mansion spawns is tens of thousands of blocks away from spawn. So, for example, in the case of me spawning in the snow biome over there, I would have to, if I was in survival mode, walk tens of thousands of blocks, and I don't even have a, that's still a rare chance. And it doesn't even say an exact amount of blocks, just tens of thousands. Now here's an interesting structure. I don't even know the name of this structure, honestly, but... That's not honest at all. Oh! Oh! Love that. Well... Here's some things for that one villager. On some arrows. Oh. Oh, hello, spider. Of course, another thing is that certain mobs will spawn in certain areas. Like, for example, a zombie villager will most likely either spawn in an igloo or in a village that has been overran by zombies. A, for example, a, let's see, one of these creatures here. Yes, for example, a husk, which is a type of zombie, will only spawn in the desert. So a husk stands in the uh, likelihood of finding a desert, just like a drowned zombie will only spawn in the water. I don't know if there's any here that I could find. Definitely fishes. I mean, fishes will spawn everywhere. If there's water, you'll find a fish. Yeah, 
Yeah, drowned, drowned zombies are, yeah, a little more rare. Oh. There's an unlikely chance, uh, a ruined portal. Now that's something I've never seen before. Just like, uh, the space of island. On a shipwreck, which, uh, as said by the Minecraft wiki, said it is not uncommon for players to find a shipwreck every five to ten minutes when using a potion of night vision technique. When using these potions, it does be worth the hassle due to the fact that players have a chance to find diamonds, emeralds, TNT, and much more in these fascinating structures. So yeah, these Structures usually contain, well, this one contains iron, which is still considered a rare commodity. I mean, iron can be used for many things. Because iron is just right below diamond. And well, hello, there's our little, little drowned friend that I was talking about who uh, just climbed right out of the ocean. And well, there's just creepers. Now what I'm gonna do... Gonna take a deal and we're just gonna... There you go. Harmless explosions. <laughs> they don't harm anything, they don't harm the area, because uh, in Minecraft, TNT that's lit in the water will, or explosions that are in the water, will do less damage. Will always do less damage than on land. And won't really, and won't do any damage to actually the ground either. As we can see here. But. Chance or not. Minecraft is, like I said, randomly generated. So anything that is said to be a likely chance can always change. And will always change. Or sometimes, depending on the situation, it will never be the same, but it may repeat. Like I said, it's a one-third chance of spawning in a snow biome, so there's only two other biomes that you can spawn in, before you spawn in a snow biome again, but a snow biome that is obviously a lot different than the one that we spawned in. And the chance of seeing those special skeleton in the snow biome, while very likely in the snow biome, are physically impossible without spawning them in, in other biomes, it's impossible to see them. Like the uh, husk being desert zombies, or the drowned being ocean zombies.
very easy to find in those areas, but impossible to find anywhere else. Almost impossible, but very likely impossible. Without physically spawning them then yourself. Oh, a wandering traveler. What are you what are you holding, bud? Oh. Oh. Well, um Now that's something. Please don't hurt the other llama. Now yes, these special kind of skeleton will only be found in this area. Open when day comes. If not protected by a helmet of some sort. They will disappear into the night. And we won't see them until night falls again. Oh. These are actually, I've never seen these before. Must be new. Little snow foxes. Now, the episode I did with Monster Hunter could also be done here as well. Because obviously there's wolves, arctic foxes, which are another thing that is very easy to find, or possible to find here, but impossible to probably find anywhere else without spawning them in yourself. And I'd say I explained the lesson well. So, uh, I'll leave it there. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoy this type of content and hope it helps you out. And until next time, class is dismissed. Brah.